Hello everyone, this is Alex from Layer coming back at you for the latest in our tutorial series on how to use workflows. Workflows being our automated content generation system on Layer.ai, allowing you to come in and generate AI-powered content at scale. Coming in right here. This, of course, the workflow that we previously created in our last video, uh, except enhanced, powered up, maybe even more powerful than ever before. Let's recap what we did previously. We were previously working on creating a CRM content generator, a way for me to come in and generate a series of images that could be used in various advertising formats, Square in particular. So Instagram 1080 by 1080 assets. This tutorial is gonna go over how to use the composition node in an advanced way to generate multiple different resolutions of the same assets coming in. And we're gonna teach you a super advanced way to use Gemini 3 to create different sized background images off the same source image, which is a very interesting thing that really only reasoning edit models like, uh, or image edit models like Gemini 2.5 and 3 can really do, as well as to a limited extent, some things like reframing videos or images or Kling 01 video edit. Let's recap quickly. We started with some base image prompts. These are treasure chests. We start with a title prompt that says it's a holiday. And then we are running these generators. We're generating treasure chests. We are then coming in and saying, make it with the lid fully open. Then we are using theme prompts. So that's themed as Christmas. And then the outputs of these items look like this. This is, let's go back into our workflow that we were working on here with the holiday treasures. Yep, so he, you end up with the a uh, CRM title, a call to action, and then a base image below there. What we are doing today is we are showcasing how to do multiple different output resolutions so that your outputs include not just a square, but a portrait and a landscape aspect ratio while being within the exact same workflow and using the exact same assets that are coming in right here. So let's get started. How are we gonna do that? First off, the image composition node has changed. This is where we stood before with a CRM title, a CTA and a base image, but you'll see there are now two additional layers, a landscape image and a portrait image. But this is the exact same place that we ended up at the end of our last video. We have a base image, we have the CRM title on top, and we have the CTA, and that is mirrored here in these example images that we have here for you but that's not sufficient. We're gonna make a square, but we also need to make a portrait and a landscape. How did we do that? Well, first off, we clicked on new resolution and new resolution copies whatever layer you're currently on. And we can right click, oops, we can click on the three dots and we can rename it or delete it. So we can rename it to example. And by default, it will carry over all layers that are present in the composition node. So we already have here, a 1080 by 1920, because we created a new layer from portrait and inherited the portraits aspect ratio. And we have several different layers that we've set up here. This is how you can create anywhere uh, from a custom aspect ratio to anything else. If you're doing Google ads, you can do a 300 by 250. If you're using the side of a takeover for a website, like on fandom, you could do a 600 by one, oops, sorry, a 150 by 600, uh, column right there, let me height 600, there we go. There's your takeover column. Now you will need to adjust and modify the sizing of these assets here, of course. So you'll want to resize the elements within here. You can ignore those errors. It's because uh, I did not resize some of these elements here, but you can then go ahead and say, I have a 150 by 600. You can create arbitrary sized, uh, aspect ratios and resolutions, and you can create as many of them as you want from the image composition node. Now let's get rid of this one. We're gonna delete that and let's go back to portrait. Portrait is very similar to the square image here, square aspect ratio. CRM title, base image, and CTA are here. The only thing that's different is that portrait 
has a portrait image instead of a base image and a CRM title and a CTA. Because it's portrait, I have moved the CRM title higher. That should address some of the uh, some of the con you know, contrast issues we had previously, and the CTA is closer to the bottom. Now we have five layers here, and we have a visibility toggle for each layer. In this case, I have disabled the landscape image. We don't need the landscape image. And I have disabled the base image. We don't need that either. I've also enabled the portrait image. If we go back to the square image, the landscape and portrait images are disabled, and the base image is being displayed. So if I go to portrait, the base image and landscape images are disabled and the portrait image is being used, 1080 by 1920. Now, if I go to the landscape, I have modified it even further. I have a CTA, a CRM title, and the landscape image is enabled while the portrait and base images are disabled, but the positioning of the CRM title and the CTA have changed. The CTA is now to the right and the CRM title is to the left. We'll respect in workflows your layouts here however you want to set them up per resolution. You can copy resolutions, you can have different positioning of your elements in each one of these different setups. You could have five different square uh, aspect ratios set up, but modify the positioning in a pixel perfect way, however you might like across those different square aspect ratios, ideal for A-B testing the positioning of elements within your scene. You could have a landscape aspect ratio with characters, character one, two, and three, and you could mix up the locations of those characters right here should you desire. You could change the CTA location from the left to the right. However, you might want to go ahead and make those variations. Go ahead, start from where you wanna start, Go ahead, create new resolution, duplicate, and modify however you want. And we will output as many of those variations as you might want. For right now, we're just going to stick with a square, a portrait, and a landscape. But we didn't start out there with a landscape or portrait image. We're only generating a 1024 by 1024 chest. So how do we get to a portrait or landscape image without stretching? Well, the answer is that we've actually added some additional image composition nodes later on. So here's what we ended up with for our square base image. Kind of cool, holiday themed right here. We have the different chests coming in, different variations of those chests right there, but they're square, they're not portrait. How do we deal with that? Well, we have an image composition node here where we are placing a base image of 1024 by 1024 centered horizontally and vertically and the canvas size is 1080 by 1920. This will generate blank pixels around here or any other type of pixels you might want. You could go ahead and create a new layer with a different color underneath it or whatever. And we have decided to generate blank pixels around the base 1024 by 1024 image. That will then give us an output of transparency around this square image. That is really interesting because it mirrors one of our templates right here. This template allows you to outpaint a scene using Gemini 3 Pro. Uh, you can go ahead and start with a base image that does not have any content around it and has a base color or transparency and ask Gemini 3 to fill in the details and it will do so. You can see right here, we've gone ahead and in-painted all the content around this fountain scene. And we're gonna do the exact same thing here. We are going to take the image composition node we are gonna create dynamically an amount of transparent pixels, both portrait and landscape. We are then going to flatten those layers. So this is a special utility node where we take the composition node and flatten them into a single layer. And then we are prompt editing that layer to generate an in-painting of that image. Now we have perfect portrait sized images right here ready to use in our composition node. And we're using the exact same prompt we use in our template right here. A way to marry the templates and the workflow. And we're just doing the exact same thing up here. I haven't run these nodes yet, so you don't see any outputs, but it will generate the exact same thing for landscapes. Now the output here should be all of the base images, four base images being generated, one CRM title, one call to action, so four assets and combinations, four times one times one, being generated. But now we're doing it times three because we have a base image, 
a portrait image, and a landscape image. We will end up with 12 assets, and those 12 assets will be in three different aspect ratios. This will cost us 83.8 creative units, and you can see how many of these distinct actions we're taking in a row. And this right here is the power of workflows. This is the ability to automate at scale many, many, many clicks, four distinct clicks for base image generators, four distinct clicks for prompt editing the variants, then theming the variants, then placing in Figma the image compositions, flattening and exporting as PNG, something you would have to do with framing in Figma, uh, prompt editing them, four more clicks right there, having the CRM title generator and all of their clicks attached to it, then the final image composition times 12. And of course, we don't charge you for any of the flattening of layers or the image composition or anything like that. Only where you are using an AI model do we charge units. So for 83.8 creative units, we're gonna run this workflow and we are going to get 12 banner ad concepts ready to go output in the time it takes for you to stand up and go get a coffee. So let's watch that in action. Here we are running each one of these uh, nodes in parallel. We're generating our base images right here for the chests. There they are, new chests coming in. We're then running the base image variant generator. The variant generator is opening up the chest so that the top is open. Uh, right there, that's the kind of variant that we're running for. After that is complete, we're gonna run into the theming. So let's wait for the chest to have its lids opened and its contents exposed. There we go. Each one of these chests there, it's doing nice stereotypical uh, coins and gems and golden cups and pearls and all sorts of other goodies inside there. So we can see that this is uh, the original chest and then opened. We have also generated our initial CRM title. It's a holiday as we go into theming. Now, I remember from the previous uh, video, we went ahead and said, here's how we theme it. We're gonna theme both of these in a holiday theme. And so we have, we have holiday themed these assets. Candy canes and presents nestle in among the doubloons and bullion. And we also have the it's a holiday becoming themed there. Image composition has completed. Flatten layers have completed. We have these assets with the transparent pixels around them. And then we also are busy prompt editing the title to remove any of the background and then or, uh, neutralize the background and then remove it in this step, which gives us our transparent background. It's a holiday CRM title. We have our reference for sign up today for our CTA, and we are waiting before this final image composition. Yep, waiting for the outpainting to be done. There they are, the chests outpainted in portrait mode and landscape mode coming in right there. Now these will go through the image composition node and our outputs will be complete. We'll have 12 distinct outputs, ta-da, coming in right there. Not bad, let's take a closer look at this. Let's download this one and this one. Let's see what we got. There's portrait right there. It's a holiday, sign up today at Layer right there, not bad. Let's take a look at the landscape. There's the landscape, it's a holiday, sign up today. Now, if this was me, I would of course go ahead and take additional actions. I would add a, uh, I would make this a little bit of transparent. I would add a drop shadow in here, I'd probably add a little bit of 3D beveling to it and a CTA above it. This needs to be shifted a bit to the left right here so that it's not um, having as poor contrast ratio against the chest, but not bad. And we got every variation right there. We have, it's a holiday. Here's a different one, a different uh, portrait variant coming in right there. Of course, we have the other portrait variant coming in right here, and we can compare these together. You can see how different chests same CRM title, same CTA on the bottom, generated as a portrait. And then we also have all the other aspect ratios as well. So that is one of the more complex workflows and you've done it, you followed along with our tutorials. Here you are in the complete area, but wait, the advanced tutorials continue. We are going to be generating videos next. We're gonna be using this exact same workflow 
to generate a video. So stick with us, wait for our next video, and we will showcase how to turn a static image into something a little bit more magical and maybe even a little bit more dynamic to power your video-based workflows. Thank you so much for joining us as always here. This is Workflows Tutorials powered by Layer.ai. Sign up today at Layer.ai. Start creating tutorials and workflows like this yourself and power your user acquisition campaigns with a click of a button while you go grab a coffee. Until next time, this is Alex signing off. We'll see you online.